believe you didn't. I don't know why you did it. When I grow up, I want to be Jill Maynard. That's just, I want to be her. She just makes me want to be a better principal. I just, ah, uh, mutual admiration society. But anyway, so, um, my principal in Millsboro, Kentucky, elementary school, that consolidated a couple years ago. We were a primary school and an intermediate across town. We ended up putting two faculties in the building, K4 now. And so I start this off by telling you, my capstone is about increasing family engagement. And we don't say parent because we have so many other people raising their kids. So we talk about the whole family. And we look at tail survey data from 2013. Uh, but that's the summer of 2013 is when I took this position. And 90 plus percent of our families didn't believe in that school, didn't want to be part of that school. Didn't really, uh, if they had another option that they could easily pick, they would do that. So within a couple of years, that school had lost over 200 students. And so uh, en enrollment was a concern. Uh, perception of the community was a concern. So we have made some changes and things are getting better. Uh, things are better. Uh, but we keep looking at our connection to community and to families. Um, we have that group, and I'm sure most of you do, that group of parents that will do anything for you. Uh, they um, are connected to the community. Uh, it's that one group. Uh, other people just don't have the means or the resources perhaps to do that, and they, they, they may have had a bad experience in school. So we have to get everybody, every parent that we can, every family member we can to be part of our community, not just a certain clique. And that's been a real challenge, a real draw for us. Uh, so uh, we recognized that when we started PTO, the school had not wanted parents engaged or involved. And so our first year there, we were really lucky to have a core group of people to step up and do that. And they started doing uh, some amazing things, but this year they even changed a little more, and they wanted to be more inclusive, uh, to include lots of people from lots of different backgrounds. Uh, socioeconomic same thing. Uh, it's been very interesting to look at uh, how they've grown over the three years. Uh, and they just had an event Friday evening, and it was um, very obvious from looking at the, group, the people participating, there was a very diverse group. Uh, it represented our community very well. Uh, and so that's kind of where we are. We've been talking about this, and so it was natural for our capstone. We talked in July. Uh, it was natural for us to go this route because culture and climate, we think, are just crucial for us to be successful. We can have the greatest teachers in the universe doing the greatest things with learning, but until you make that connect, we only get students for part of their time. That family has that child for the rest of the time. So that's kind of where we were. Um, we looked at ways to include families. And so I gave you kind of a list. It's the same thing as in the program. But I gave you kind of our cheat sheet of things that we're doing this year. We've always done midterm events. We're doing them a little different to make them more welcoming and less threatening to families, uh, to be more conversational, to build relationships and bonds. Uh, family nights, uh, we're looking at ways to educate parents about the technology we use in our schools. Uh, Mr. Lewis did a great math night for us at the end of the year last year, and we copied uh, where he, he was exposing his parents to the iPads that he uses in the classroom, uh, manipulatives, uh, how to use Legos uh, to do arrays, just really creative ways to educate about what we must be responsible for. And then the key to that uh, all along is building those relationships. So that I, as a, as, a, as a teacher, am not seen as a threat when I contact that family member, when I talk to them, or when I pass them on the street, or when I see them in the parking lot of school. Uh, that's really important. Additional conference time. Every kindergarten uh, student in our building, uh, their families have met with each individual teacher multiple times already this year because we allowed additional conference time during the day. So uh, I had some subs, and we took random days in the month of uh, September, and. At 10 o'clock, you showed up and you stayed till 8 o'clock that night. So you worked a varied schedule so you could make contact with lots of parents and they could come in and sit down at their leisure. You have you know, donuts, you have a snack, and just talk about things that were going on. And it really lended us to not talk about grades, but this is where your child's performing, and this is where your child should be performing. This is what can be done, uh, completed next. And we started that with our first grade, and we have the majority of our first grade parents, we have 115 students in first grade and we've seen all of those families except for 12. So we had some really good face-to-face -face conference time which is just building those relationships. Tutoring opportunities, we say for students and families it's important for us to educate uh, in a different role the adults in our community about schools especially grandparents which is a large portion. We talked yesterday 60 percent of the students in our county are raised by uh, someone other than a biological parent, 60%. That's an increase of 12% in the last 10 years. That's just phenomenal. 
Um, so that's really important. And providing different tutoring opportunities. Our students worked with uh, Lincoln Memorial University uh, med students yesterday after school in a science project. It was amazing to see those students, you know, more than half of your student population in fourth grade, staying to work with people in the professional field and families supporting that, being involved and engaged with that. We also are fortunate enough to be a leader in B school. So it's important for us to educate our parents about that so they don't just hear at home think win-win, but they know what think win-win means. They're practicing the same vocabulary, so it's important for us to, to share that. Common core sessions. School today is very different than when our parents went to school. And so it's important for us also to talk to uh, families about what's expected, uh, what math and kindergarten looks like, what uh, reading language arts looks like. Uh, we've had those great conversations. Uh, we do notebooks at our school, and it's kind of evolved from our Leader Me program, uh, leadership notebooks and goal setting notebooks. So our students are beginning to lead those conferences. Uh, that's been a push for us this year. And so by the time you see us in the spring, uh, our students will be controlling uh, our midterm conferences and our non-week conferences and those uh, additional conference times. Improved communication. Angel Green's presenting next door in the room right now about newsletters. You know, we send newsletters home, and at the end of the day when you leave school, you see all these newsletters all over the place, all over campus. And we've looked at ways to increase um, our effective ways of communication. And so students are creating our fourth grade newsletters right now. And they're documenting it so they have more of a vested interest in getting that piece home to families. And that's part of a project that is going to support this. And then social interactions. We want things to occur in our building, in our community, that are uh, engaging families that we might talk about a, a reading score while you're there, but to not look them together to watch a movie or to hear music. You know, it's not the purpose of talking about grades. That's going to come naturally after you and I have a really good bond. And so we've made things less threatening. Um, trying to make sure I get through all my notes because I thought, oh, Jill, oh my goodness. Uh, so uh, <laughs> to, uh, tomorrow night we kick off Imagination Library. In fact, we turned it into a family event for us. Uh, we are modeling good reading practices. Those aren't our students yet, but they will be our students. So if we can get those first years of cognitive development, it's really important. We're talking about activities to do that are essential. Uh, and then networking with community members, that's very important for us. Uh, so we host things such as that, such as ready for kindergarten and foreign learning at our school, even though those aren't truly our K-4 students yet. It's so important for our community to see us as that touchstone for education. So that's where we are. That's where we're moving to. Um, I listed on the back a list of books and resources we pull from, and some really good materials there. Uh, if you are interested in any of those, email me, and I'll get you what I can get you from those. Uh, but there's some really good bits and pieces and lots of uh, lots of those um, those books to reference to. So if you have any questions, you're always welcome to yell at me. I'm really happy to work with anybody. So that's great. It's good. Are you all good? Have a great afternoon. Thanks for being here.